All right, three down. I passed the Palo Alto Networks Network Security Generalist Certification. This is the third of the certifications that I am taking as part of the challenge to take all of the new Palo Alto Networks role-based certifications. This one was pretty tough. It was a lot more technical than the previous two that I had taken. It was a lot more in depth and I'm going to walk through my whole journey. This video will be a little bit different, so check it out. If you watched my previous videos on the new Palo Alto certifications, you noticed that I recorded everything after the exam. This video I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm starting to record before the exam. Today is January 3rd, 2025. Happy New Year. And I have just scheduled my NETSEC generalist exam, as you see here, for one week from today, Friday, January 10th. And so I will be preparing to take that exam. So let's begin. If you're a network engineer or a network security engineer, the first certification you might want to look into would be the network security generalist. This certification is focused on Palo Alto Networks network security products. Both the firewall, which has a lot of the original certifications that everybody knows and loves, like the PCNSA, the PCNSE, but this certification is unique from those because it also includes Palo Alto's Secure Access Service Edge products. And so that will be tested within the certification and your ability to understand and configure those products specifically will be included in this certification. So that's generally what the certification is for. And it is the generalist certification, so it's a bit more introductory, maybe a little bit intermediate level. It's not an advanced certification for to show very in-depth level expertise within either the firewall or uh, the Palo Alto Networks Prisma Secure Access Service Edge Prisma SASE product. I continued that recording and I went line by line in the data sheet to determine which things I knew well and which things I needed to improve. And I think that's very valuable, but it took me about 12 minutes and it was a little too much for this video to be honest. So I uploaded that as a separate video, which you can check out right here. I do recommend checking that out if you want to get a general idea of how I prepare for Prepare to prepare, basically. How do I determine what I need to study for a Palo Alto Networks certification? And a lot of you on Reddit have said, hey, we miss the study guides. We don't, what, what happened to the study guides? We don't have those anymore. And what you can do with the data sheet is you can basically build your own study guide, determine what things that you need to study to prepare for this certification. And the data sheet will absolutely help you do that. So check out that video if you want to know how to do that, and I think it is valuable, but it was a little too long for this video. What I got out of it was that there were three areas that I needed to review. Um, one was SD-WAN, one was the Prisma SASE remote network configuration, and the third was the SAS security, SAS inline security. I reviewed those, and those were the things that I studied I did that recording two days before the exam, so I did procrastinate a little bit, and I had about two days to prepare and to review those items and get to know them better before I had the exam on the 10th. So I recorded that on the 8th, and I took the exam on the 10th. Let's continue with the video. So it's January 10th, exam day, and it is uh, 5.21 a.m. right now. I woke up at like 3 a.m. with some exam jitters, so I did some additional studying yesterday and today. I've done a lot of the courses on Beacon specifically for those specific sections that I mentioned that I wasn't very strong in. So like SD-WAN, remote networks, and the SAS security, SAS API. I have taken a lot of those Beacon courses. I think they're really helpful. I am going to go work out. And then maybe if I can get a little bit more studying in before the test, that would be great. But uh, I don't know if I will have time. So this may be all the studying that I can do. All right, I am here parked just outside of the Florida State College Jacksonville Deerwood. Uh, there's, this is where the Pearson View Center is that I'll be taking this test. This is the same place that I took the last test, the cybersecurity practitioner. I didn't get any, managed to get any additional studying done after 5.30 a.m. before I went to the gym. So I've 
you know, I've got what I've got, and I think I'm, I'm mostly confident with most of the topics, but we'll see how I do. I just finished the exam. I will say I did have good reason to be a little bit stressed this morning. It was pretty difficult. There were some very, very technical, in-depth questions on there. It was a mix of questions that I just knew the answer to and questions that I really had to think about. I had to remember a lot of the details of the various strata products in Palo Alto. I did pass. I am very happy about the fact that I managed to pass. So this, of course, a provisional pass, but I expect to receive the full pass soon. So I am off to go back home. The Network Security Generalist certification was by far the most difficult of the three certifications that I've done so far. The questions were very in depth. There were a lot of technical questions about how actually to configure specific things, including all the products within the Strata portfolio, the firewalls, Prisma SASE, SD-WAN, etc. So if you're going to do this particular certification, definitely recommend that you get hands-on as much as possible with all of these different products. Definitely take a look at all of the different interfaces, get an idea of what the different menus, etc. are if you're going to study for it. I think I studied the ideal way, at least for me, that I went through the data sheet and I identified which areas in particular that I was weak in, and then I was able to actually just use Beacon to determine, to, to watch those particular lessons, to take those particular lessons associated with those areas that I was weak in. I definitely recommend you do that. I do have that other video that you can check out about how to go through the data sheet and determine what areas that you're stronger or weaker in and then you can use the results of that from specifically those areas that you're weak in and then go on to Beacon and take the associated classes within Beacon. Definitely recommend that you do that. From an administrative perspective, the exam itself was pretty straightforward. I've been to this facility several times. The, pe the people there actually recognized, recognized me because I've been there so many times recently doing this challenge. I didn't have any issues. It was all very straightforward. I didn't have the computer problems that I had had last time. So the exam went very, very well. And as I mentioned before, I did not receive a breakdown of the different sections that you may have been used to in former Palo Alto exams where you get a different breakdown of this is how well you did in this section, this is how well you did in this section. You don't receive that anymore and you also do receive a provisional pass for one to two days before you actually get your formal credential. Now, the Palo Alto Network's certification program lead actually reached out to me about this and he wanted to explain to me why that is. So I want to relay, relay that to all of you. Basically, the purpose of this is to increase exam security. The provisional pass allows Palo Alto Networks via Pearson View to do additional automated checks just to ensure that nobody is cheating and that nobody's doing anything that they're not supposed to during the exam. The breakdown keeps people from doing exam dumps, so it keeps people from taking their breakdown and then going in and trying to write down all the questions that they remember from each section. And then if they have a really good score in that section, then they know that they probably got those answers correct. If you're not familiar with this practice, I definitely, definitely, definitely condemn this. This is not a good thing to do, and it completely ruins the spirit of these certifications. So don't, don't ever do this, or don't ever encourage anybody to do this, and don't buy them either. These exam dumps are things that people sell online, so please don't contribute to that culture or that, that industry. It completely ruins the point of these exams. The point of these exams is not to memorize questions. The point of these exams is to actually learn the products to show that you are able to configure them in a real world environment to show an employer that you can actually do that. If you can't do that, then the solution isn't to go, uh, you know, cheat. The solution is to just learn the products better. If you know the pro all these products pretty well at, at an intermediate, really a beginner level, if you know all these products at a beginner level, their purpose and some basic things on how to configure them, you're going to do fine in this exam. You don't need to cheat. Just learn the products. So who is this certification for? I personally really recommend this certification for anyone who's looking into network security, obviously specifically Palo Alto network security. I understand that some people <clears throat> might feel that looking at something like SASE or looking at cloud management or looking at SD-WAN 
might not be a good use of their time if they're just focused on firewalls, for example. That's something I've heard a lot of you say on Reddit. You want a replacement for the PCNSA, the Palo Alto Certified Network Security Administrator, which just focuses on firewalls and is kind of that beginner intermediate level exam. This exam is that level, but it has those additional products. I think there is value in that. And if you are planning to become more of a specialist in the firewall, it still does make sense for you to begin by understanding these other products as well at, a, at, a, at this really beginner level. Like I mentioned, there are questions about how to configure them and things, but a lot of that you can get from the Beacon courses or just seeing a demo or work doing a ultimate test drive with your uh, Palo Alto Solutions Consultant. You can get that basic level of knowledge, which will help you uh, understand what, everything that you need for the exam for this certification. So don't fret. It's not like you're being expected to get super duper in the weeds, something like a PCNSE or a Cisco 300 level exam. It's not like that. It's introductory basic configuration and understanding how the different pieces and menus work within these different products. So I really recommend if you're going to be focused on network security, with, especially with Palo Alto products, start with this exam, get a general picture of the Palo Alto Networks uh, network security platform and ecosystem, and that will give you a, a better idea of how everything works. For example, the cloud delivered security solutions are a big part of this exam, and it's very important to understand all of those cloud delivered security solutions. And those are resident throughout all of the Strata products. Those are not specific just to firewalls or to SASE. Those are resident uh, within both firewalls and SASE. So I really recommend, uh, for example, that you learn those really well, but that's just an example of why it's important to understand this entire platform before moving on to really specializing and going deep within a specific product. If you don't agree with me, let me know in the comments. I do want to let you all know that I'm going to try to have that security program lead in one of my future videos. I'm going to interview him. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask the Palo Alto Network security program lead, I'll see if I can put those in the interview. And until then, I will see you in my next video.